CBS Sports. The Hambletonian is America's greatest trotting race, a classic that has defined careers and helped create many of the sport's greatest legends. Jimmy Tector, it's a Tectortonian! But two of today's biggest stars have yet to hoist the Hambletonian trophy. Together, Ron Burke and Yannick Gingra have won almost everything there is to win, except this race. They have been painfully close, None more so than Burke, who watched his What the Hill cross the line first before being disqualified from victory in 2017. The front left hoof of number nine will strike the wheel. That is what ended up causing the disqualification. But the prolific pair teamed up to sweep last week's eliminations, setting the stage for another shot at racing's biggest prize. Will this be the year they finally break through? It's the Hamiltonian, and it's coming up next. The Meadowlands Racetrack, for close to 50 years, the home of the world's greatest harness racing. And since 1981, the host venue for America's greatest race, the Hambletonian. It is a beautiful afternoon in East Rutherford, New Jersey today under sunny skies, a fast oval. The celebrities are out, including some of the greatest trainers and drivers in the sport. Kelsey Grammer is even here. We've got food trucks, live entertainment, and of course, world-class harness racing. Today, over the next hour, we'll bring you two of the very best in the sport. The Hamiltonian Oaks, $500,000 on the line for the Philly Trotters. And, of course, the main event, the 98th edition of the Hamiltonian, chasing $1 million in prize money. What an afternoon in store. Hi again, everybody, and welcome Trackside. Greg Blanchard, pleased to be joined once again this year by Emily Gaskin and uh, Emily excitement abounds big crowd here today great atmosphere of course and so many storylines uh, do you have one in the Hamiltonian you're looking forward to most I think that's what's most exciting this year Greg is that there are so many storylines it's a wide open event making it super competitive and uh, like you said so many storylines I think I'd have to go with my if you make me choose one I'd have to go with the Burke Yannick Gingra they've got to get a Hamiltonian I know they've got this one circled on their on their minds <laughs> A lot of people will be rooting for Ron Burke to try and break through this season. And we want to set the stage, first of all, though, for the Hamiltonian Oaks this afternoon. We're going to take you back to last week and show you how things unfolded. In the first elimination, Walner Payton was set on uh, odds of almost 5-1 to one on this occasion. Started from post six and driver Dexter Dunn was able to capitalize on her early speed. Yeah, she left out of there pretty handily, Greg, and I think a lot of the other drivers are waiting to see. The thing I think the most important thing was, though, she got to the front, was able to relax and look like she was all business from there. And you see Dexter Dunn just letting the Philly roll along at the midway point of the race. Uh, the fractions were solid, but she had enough left to narrowly hold on at the end, hold safe by a half a length. Yeah, and those then, are some pretty tough fillies coming at her, and, you know, she did what she was supposed to do. All right, Hart on fire. She had post five last week and was sent off at very long odds, 36 to 1, in fact. Todd McCarthy, who, of course, won the Hamiltonian last year, engineering a little bit of magic on this night. Yeah, she was uninvolved through the early stages. We saw some serious speed from Bond, but Hart on fire was able to relax and then, of course, uh, get up when it mattered most. At this point in the race, sitting back on the inside fourth, uh, McCarthy in no rush to make a move there and now doing stick handling along the inside just enough room to get through yeah I have to believe her connections were never so happy to see the rail <laughs> open up there and she did again what she was supposed to do put her nose on the line when she was supposed to so the two elimination winners from a week ago they'll leave right beside each other today posts one and two respectively with five hundred thousand dollars on the line time for our first commercial break we'll be back with more from the Meadowlands next The 2023 Hamiltonian is brought to you by Meadowlands Racing and Entertainment and by the Hamiltonian Society. 
The We Need to Talk team takes you through NFL training camp, walks you on to the WNBA hardwood, and checks in with our stars overseas. Tuesday on CBS Sports Network. Your seat cushion can be used to grant wishes. Who said that? Hello? Really can, you know. You talking to me? Sure am. Because the airline miles you earn and donate to make a wish can help send thousands of kids on their wish trips. So donate to make a wish today. You really should, you know. You really should. And give wishes wings. Because wishes work wonders. Raj Farms, more than three decades of trend setting in modern trotting. The birthplace of millionaires such as Fern, Muscles Marinara, Whiskey Tax, and Dewey Color in the Line. Check out their lineup of 19 yearlings by sires such as Jim Panzee, Green Chew, The Great Six Pack, and Chapter 7, selling this fall in Lexington, Kentucky. Find them all at avaragefarm.com on Facebook and Instagram. Sail into summer in New Jersey, where sea breezes drift along iconic sunny shores. Stroll boardwalks or ride high. Take time out to breathe in the great outdoors. Dive into history, arts, culture. Treat yourself, shop, dine. From our dazzling winning cities to charming towns in the countryside. Find it all at visitnj.org. Meet the team, behind the team, the coach, the manager, and the snack dad, all using Chase to keep up with their finances. The coach helps save goals here because she saved for soccer camp there. And check this out. The manager deposited a check. Magic. And the snack dad, he's getting paid back. Orange slices. Because this team all has Chase. Smart bankers, convenient tools, one bank with the power of both. Chase, make more of what's yours. When you drive a Ram, summer is more than a season. It's an opportunity to load up on more toys, to stop looking for fun and be the one who brings it, and to make every day even more inviting than the last. Make this the summer you drive America's best light duty pickup. During the Ram Make This the Summer event, get 4,000 retail consumer cash allowance on most 2023 Ram 1500 trucks. The American Cancer Society's Hope Lodge communities offer a free home away from home, closer to cancer care. People are meant to be together. Learn more to help keep it that way. CBS Sports Network goes all in with the World Series of Poker. We're talking a full house of characters in a competition flush with cash. The World Series of Poker on CBS Sports Network. Pocket spot needs to shake loose. Off cover, Clark Magistrate taking dead aim for the upset. And out with a whip is Ray Schnitger. Dewey Cheatham and Howe. Here comes Crazed and Tim Tietrick on the outside to test the champion to the wire. Dewey needs the wire. Dewey Cheatham and Howe. Crazed on the outside. Dewey does it. Devastating Dewey. Undefeated. 152. Our first trip down memory lane this afternoon, the great Dewey Cheatham and Howe winning for driver Ray Schnicker on that day. Who's it going to be this year? The 98th edition of the Hamiltonian straight ahead. But before that, it's time to meet the field for the Hamiltonian Oaks to set the stage for us this afternoon. There's a look at the first five starters, including those two eliminations. Uh, two elimination winners who start side by side. Yeah, they were able to uh, draw because they were the elimination winners. So they drew post one and post two. Draw from post one to five. They drew right beside each other. Walner Payton and drawing the rail. And uh, as you see there, Hall on fire drawing post two. Bond, who came into the field, uh, into the season, I should say, with uh, hopes aimed toward the Hamiltonian. She'll try the Oaks today, post three for her. Canadian champion, Righteous Resolve from post four. And then post six through 10 uh, if any of those win it would be an upset yeah very much so and uh, taking a look here we've got trainer Marcus Melander the post draws were not fair to him were not easy to him draw post seven oh, excuse me eight nine and ten 
So it is a wide open affair. Let's head over now to join our colleague, Mike Carter. Hey guys, what an action packed afternoon it has been thus far. The $500,000 Hamiltonian Oaks features some of Harness Racing's greatest three year old Philly trotters. Trainer Matt Bax is going to try to do what Jim Campbell did last year, winning the Hamiltonian and Hamiltonian Oaks. We'll see if he can do it with Righteous Resolve and Southwind Cores. Back to you guys. Well, thank you very much, Mike. We look forward to catching up with him throughout the afternoon. And uh, Max, one of uh, a few in the field, trying to pull that rare Oaks Hamiltonian double yeah, in the same year. It doesn't happen often, but when it does, it truly is something special. Of course, uh, both driver and trainer, something that I would have to believe is atop their career highlights. All right. Well, the starting gate getting set to roll for the Hamiltonian Oaks with $500,000 on the line. Top three-year-old Philly trotters in the sport getting set to square off. Let's take a look now with the Hall of Fame announcer here, Ken Warkenden. Time fight, three to one, three to one on the five. Rayleigh something and Yannick Jengra, who has owned the Hamiltonian Oaks. A four to one on three, Bond. Here they come for the Hamiltonian Oaks, race 10. Phillies are off and trotting. Rayleigh, something's out fast on the inside with righteous resolve. Secret Bolo did blast off on the outside. Oh, Walner, Payton, and Hart on fire getting away fifth. Bond off the pace here. No speed today in the sixth position. And then Instagram model on the outside, followed by Mamba Sita. A Kaylee gaps at the back of the pack, and then Heaven Hanover has to pass them all today. Rayleigh something. Jingra at the quarter in a snappy 26 flat to open it up here. Rayleigh something leads the way across the back stretch. Righteous resolve, and James McDonald has set up shop in that second spot. Secret Volo after speed backed away in third. Walner Payton gapped in fourth. Gap at two lengths to Hart on fire on the inside fifth. Instagram model looking to go up sixth along with Bond from off the speed here. Then Mombasita, Kaylee on the inside, and Heaven Hanover still trails. Halfway home for Rayleigh something. 53 and 2, moving right along here. 27 and 2 speed. Second quarter, Rayleigh something. A dreamy two hole trip here for Righteous Resolve. Walner Payton, the elimination winner, now third on the outside and gaining Secret Volo back to fourth and pin then down. It is Instagram model, second overall set to come three wide. Bond is third over right now and stacked up, needs to fan to the outside, stride for stride with Hart on fire with no racing room. At three quarters, it's Rayleigh something. Righteous Resolve poised to pounce out of the pocket. Here she comes. One, 21 and three. Amazing three quarter time in the stretch. Rayleigh something on the inside. Righteous Resolve, the perfect trip, trying to pay off. Secret Volo. Bond is trying to close in. Han Heaven Hanover on the far outside, down to the wire. Righteous Resolve fighting back. Rayleigh something. Here comes Heaven Hanover. Heaven Hanover! Then Bond. Then close. Righteous Resolve or Secret Volo. Heaven Some Hanover. Some post 10 magic again for the second consecutive year. Driver Tim Tietrich has made his winning connections very happy, celebrating as Heaven Hanover gets it done. An upset win in the Hamiltonian Oaks from off the pace in a thrilling addition that came right down to the final strides. What a way to start off Hamiltonian Day here at the Big M. We'll take a quick commercial break and have some words from the winning connections coming up next. Not on this day, not in this race, not in this sport. Return on investment comes in seconds. This is Harness Racing. We welcome you to the Harness Racing Fan Zone. See it all for yourself. Feel it in all the passion. Share that experience with others. The Harness Racing Fan Zone puts you in the driver's seat. The company goes to the firstborn, Audrey, the model train set is entrusted to Todd. 
Mr. Marbles will receive recurring deliveries for all of his needs in perpetuity, thanks to auto ship from Chewy. I always loved that old man. What's this say about the summer house? Yeah, the beach the house. summer yeah. residence goes to Mr. Marbles. <laughs> Plot twist. I'm sorry, what? Doesn't make logistical sense. Unbelievable. Pets aren't just pets. They're more. You got a train set, Todd. Save more on what they love and never run out with auto ship from Chewy. Look like there's a flag. Mike, I can't keep up with you. You're racing around like you're 10 years younger. How do you stay in such great shape? Eugenics Total Tea, Ed, helps me stay leaner, stronger, and gives me back to the energy and stamina I had when I was younger. How'd you hear about it, Jax? You kidding? You haven't seen Frank Thomas and Doug Flutie talk about it? Men over 40, get Eugenics Total Tea and get back on your game. Tell them to send a text. Send a text. To get your complimentary bottle of Eugenics Total Tea, text Bold. To 231 231. This unique man boosting formula is powered by Testafin, a patented key ingredient clinically validated to help increase free testosterone levels so you can trim up and stay lean. Hey, Ralph, aren't you forgetting something? And it's your lucky too. Get your complimentary bottle of Nugenics now. Text bold to 231 231. Text now and we'll include a bottle of Nugenics Thermo, our most powerful fat incinerator ever, absolutely free. In case you're new here, we're here to make history. We are more than the names on our back. We're the team on the front, the country on our shoulders, the city behind us, and the fire inside us. The best in the world. We got us. We don't just play the world's game. We run it. Welcome back to the Meadowlands Racing and Entertainment. The 98th edition of the Hamiltonian is straight ahead here on CBS Sports. But first of all, we have to look back at that Hamiltonian Oaks, Emily, which was a thriller. Heaven Hanover, I have no idea where she came from. Where did, uh, where did she make that final rally from? Around the far turn, Greg, she was last at the top of the stretch, and she just absolutely exploded. A beautiful display of trotting talent to get up in the final strides. But I, like you, so busy watching that front battle that I forgot to watch the back of the field. Horses were coming from everywhere, but it was ultimately Heaven Hanover best in front. Yeah, I mean, uh, that was a thriller, and uh, that's why these are the best drivers in the world. Tim Tietrick, right? He did it last year from post 10, but did it in a different way. Yeah, exactly. He was on the front, uh, so a little different tactics. Obviously, post 10 didn't scare him tonight. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, it is Heaven Hanover getting it done in long shot fashion here, uh, as I believe we're going to have a look at the prices next year from race number 10 on the program, which was the Hamiltonian Oaks. We're going to throw it over now to Mike Carter, who's got the winning connection. Here with winning trainer Marcus Melander, who picks up his first Hamiltonian Oaks this afternoon. Marcus, how's it feel? Uh, it feels great, you know, and then uh, it, it really does. But, you know, we got two more races to go. Like, that's pretty important. So it's like you have to, yeah, celebrate, of course, you know, but then you have to get back to work. So, yeah. Now, Marcus, obviously we talked a little bit, uh, you talked a little bit throughout the week, and you said you just kind of had to let her grow up a little bit, but post 10 was going to be tough. I don't know what Tietrich's deal is with post 10. Two years in a row from post 10, he's able to pick up the victory. She really grew up nicely. Yeah, I mean, we, of course, we were lucky they went 53 to the half. You know, that, that really helped. Otherwise, if they would have been 55 to the half, it would have been impossible. So, you know, uh, she came strong, you know, last quarter and uh, just, just got there in time. Congratulations, Marcus. Go enjoy it. Thank you. Get breaking news. Big news coming out of the NFL today. Highlights and instant reactions. I want to take time to analyze greatness. We're down to the final four. Talk winners and losers with a guy who's already a big winner. CBS Sports HQ. It's all sports all day long. Harness Racing's World Championship event, valued at $7 million, returns to Harris Hoosier Park Racing and Casino for two extraordinary nights of racing. Join us Friday, October 27th, and Saturday, October 28th, 2023, for the 40th edition of the Breeders' Crown. In harness racing, it all comes down to the crown. I have type 2 diabetes, but I manage it well. It's a little pill with a big story to tell. I take one daily Jardians at each day start. Time went on, it was easy to see. I'm lowering my A1C. 
Guardians works 24-7 in your body to flush out some sugar. And for adults with type 2 diabetes and known heart disease, Jardians can lower the risk of cardiovascular death, too. Jardians may cause serious side effects, including ketoacidosis that may be fatal, dehydration that can lead to sudden worsening of kidney function, and genital yeast or urinary tract infections. A rare life-threatening bacterial infection in the skin of the perineum could occur. Stop taking Jardians and call your doctor right away if you have symptoms of this infection, ketoacidosis, or an allergic reaction. And don't take it if you're on dialysis. Taking Jardians with the sulfonylurea or insulin may cause low blood sugar. Jardians. Trapper Beats, oh, one go. upping. <laughs> I'm a big Old Trapper fan. <laughs> Not bigger than me. I love Old Trapper. I love how tender it is. Don't forget the wood smoke flavor. What about the clear bag? That shows you exactly what you're getting. Savory beef. Quality ingredients. I'm their biggest fan. I'm their biggest I'm fan. Their... Old Trapper, what's your beef? Will you sign my bag and my tattoo? And four, 27 and two, and she's trying to give them the slip here. It is Atlanta, the Philly, and Scott Saran trying to keep her going. Trying to track her down. Crystal Fashion Mets Hall on the outside. Tactical landing on the inside. Almost there, Atlanta. Scott Saran rocking, whipping, driving, and the Philly does it! Atlanta, then Mets Hall. That was the great trotting mare Atlanta winning in 2018. Scott Zeron, a young Scott Zeron, teaming up with his dad, Rick, who was the trainer at the time. And uh, that was one of the great Hamiltonian memories. And since then, Emily, Scott has really solidified his reputation as a big money driver. Certainly so. He didn't get the nickname by a mistake. Uh, he always shows up. And, you know, he's one of those guys that's just as professional on the track as he is off the track as well. A true pleasure and a true professional in every sense of the word. Yeah, and he has a nose for the big money, as we said. He's only 34 years old, uh, a native of Oakville, Ontario. Uh, since relocating to the U.S., he's won uh, a couple of Hamiltonians. He's won a couple of Pepsi North America Cups. Those are million dollar races and doesn't shy away from the spotlight. It doesn't. And you know, long odds don't don't scare him either. He's already had a few upset winners today as well. So he's off to a great start. All right. So yeah, look at some of the accomplishments uh, from Scott Zeron to this point in his career. Uh, 4,400 wins and counting. And he is going to join the exclusive $100 million club in harness racing very, very soon. He's on the verge of that. He's also won, by the way, a little brown jug and a trotting triple crown along the way. So he is known as the money man, and there is certainly a reason for that. He'll have post 10 today in the Hamiltonian final, trying to weave some of that magic once again. Here he is now with Mike Carter. Hey guys, with driver Scott Zeron and Scott, you were on the sidelines last year. You're back on Hamiltonian day. How you feeling? Oh, it feels great to be back on the race bike, that's for sure. Hambo Day, uh, you know, was a different perspective from my side last year. I, you know, I, was, I was a commentator just like you guys, which is great because I added that driver perspective on the horses. But fortunately, I was injured a week before the Hambletonian. That put me out for about 10, 12 weeks, and uh, we're back. Now let's talk a little bit about tactical approach. Had a lot of late trot down the stretch. Post 10 is obviously going to make things tough. But as we saw in the Hambletonian Oaks, that doesn't seem to matter. No, the 10 seem to be winning today and off the pace is strong. Uh, I hope at the end of this race, everyone says it's the most exciting Hamiltonian they ever saw, because if that's the case, there was a lot of movement, a lot of action early, and uh, hopefully I'm there to pick up the pieces. Now, Scott, you won the Triple Crown with Marion Marauder. We, who could forget that? What would it be like to kind of kick off the uh, Triple Crown season with this one today? Yeah, it certainly would. He's actually a well-deserved horse to be in this race, and uh, if I could just give him that opportunity turning for home to be in, in position to, uh, to get up there, I think he'll give it to me. Good luck, Scott. Thank you. Greg, Emily, back to you. Thank you very much. And Scott, like Ron Waples, a fellow Canadian on his way, perhaps to the Hall of Fame, we caught up with the Hall of Famer recently to recall one of the greatest moments in Hambo history. Phenomenal! 
absolutely magisterial here. Purple Haze Standard Bread Adoption Program in Oxford, New York was created in 2018 by Wanda Palacini to provide training to transition for finding homes and new careers for horses. Horses are started with groundwork and then ridden in an arena before moving on. Horses at Purple Haze are then evaluated and adopted out based on abilities and temperament. If you have a horse that you care about or if you are looking for a great pleasure horse, contact Purple Haze Standard Bread Adoption Program at 518-669-2715. Ever dream of owning your own racehorse? How would you like to get in the winner's circle? With the number one harness racing partnership in the U.S., VIP State. There's nothing like the thrill of your horse coming down the stretch. To find out more, call VIP Stable at 877-VIP-WIN-1 or visit us on the web at www.vipstable.com. Turning horse racing fans into racehorse owners. Be a winner. The world's greatest harness racing returns to Meadowlands Racing and Entertainment on Thursday, September 1st. Live racing kicks off at 6.20 p.m. on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday night. Admission and parking are free. We have a full calendar of fall events, so check out PlayMeadowlands.com for all the info. The track is also open for simulcasting seven days a week. Visit PlayMetalLands.com for details. We love our house. It's on a great block, tree-lined streets. The neighbors are observant. And we're back at the Sullivan house. It's lawn day, Sheila, and the leaves are piling up. Ugh, bit of an eyesore. I'll say. Dry shave, interesting technique. That's gonna come back to haunt him. Some people clean while they cook, not these folks. At least Geico makes bundling our home and car insurance easy. Saves us a ton. If only they bundled the leaves. You know, I wouldn't have pegged these two as yogis. I still don't. For bundling made easy, go to geico.com. Wake up, achievers. If you're making the most of every hour of your life, except the hours that you're sleeping. So why do we leave so much untapped potential on the table? This is a next level bed for a next level you. My circadian rhythm is kicking your circadian rhythm's butt. It's not a competition. I know, <laughs> but I'm still winning. So it is a competition. Save up to $500 on the new Sleep Number Smart Bed, plus free home delivery when you add an adjustable base. Shop now, only at Sleep Number. An American winner, five, two and a half, three. Up on the outside, Heim Chip is gaining steadily, but with a 16th to go, American winner, and Pierce by two and a half, three. It's all American winner. The sword is up for Pierce in 153 and 2. A large crowd on hand this afternoon at the Meadowlands Racing and Entertainment as we get set to bring you coverage of the 98th edition of the Hamiltonian, the $1 million trotting classic straight ahead. And what storylines do we have in store for us this year? Well, back in 1989, one of the most epic moments happened, a dead heat. Earlier this week, we caught up with Hall of Famer Ron Waples for his recollections. Probe pumps ahead in front, probe on the outside. Park Avenue Joe comes roaring back, a relentless drive to the wire. Park Avenue Joe, probe, here's the finish. Too close to call. Those two horses had raced again one another three or four times and I think the biggest amount I'd ever beat them was a was a head or something you know so they're very evenly matched those two horses and as far as you know you it, you can't feel sorry because you're dead heated you know you're still elated you know but then it went to the courts after that and, and uh, they decided as an overall standing and that I was declared the winner but it just uh, whether whether it has stayed a dead heat and they never went to court or whatever else and you'd still have to be elated with it because the Hamiltonian has been around for a century and that's the first time it's ever happened and it might never happen again for a few years you don't know you know so it, it was just quite a thing really he felt really good and the, and the thing that uh, went through my mind you know right up till uh, down near the wire I thought I could trot away from him anytime I want. Now Billy moves here on the on the bottom turn there, but he don't go anywhere. He just sits out there, and nor do I go anywhere. I back into him a little bit, matter of fact. We're well into the stretch, and we come a quarter, I think, in 26 and 2 or something, the, 
you know, it was a heck of a last quarter and, and two great horses went at it, you know. But the stupid part was, for me, I, I thought, I can trot away anytime I want. I just have to pull the trigger here. Roaring back, a relentless drive to the wire. Park Avenue, Joe, probe, here's the finish. Too close to call. Hope you don't mind, but I got goosebumps in my arms from watching it again. <laughs> And uh, it, it was the most exciting race probably I was ever in in my life. 1989, hard to believe, but uh, one of the most epic moments ever in the history of the event. It was, and he said, you know, still got goosebumps watching that race, and I think that just speaks to, uh, you know, the nature of these drivers and everyone involved. When you win a Hamiltonian, it's cool no matter how many years later you watch it. Absolutely. And you know, another great part of the storyline that year, a young Dave Brower was the photo finish uh, camera operator at that time. Of course, Dave went on to become the longtime morning line odds maker at the Meadowlands as well as one of the most renowned and respected television analysts in the sport and a staple here on many of these CBS broadcasts over the years. He lived for days like these. We sadly lost Dave less than a year ago, but know that he is with us today. Our friend and colleague dearly missed, but never forgotten. They said I couldn't dream called me a piece of trash and swore that's all I'd ever be. Said a bottle couldn't see the ocean. Give up. Go back to the dumpster. But I didn't listen. I made my way. And now, I am what I've always wanted to be. As the most trusted sales agency for over 25 years, Preferred Equine has been the leading consigner at all the live, in-person, yearling and mixed sales throughout North America, representing clients from around the globe. And with the recent launch of Preferred Equine Online, they offer the newest and up-to-date technology in online digital sales. Visit PreferredEquine.com or give them a call at 914-773-7777. There's a reason we're preferred. Pros, it's my job to make sure you're prepared for anything. And I mean anything. It's go time, Randy. Play me, Randy! Play me! Thanks to our pros, that house was good as new in no time. Didn't they call you the Dragon Tamer? still do from fire damage to misbehaving pets you can count on serve pro to make it like it never even happened interesting piece let me bring in my expert mm, so many scratches uh, those are from my car keys such a rich history this won't do well at auction but at AT&T, it's worth a brand new Samsung Galaxy Z Flip 5. <laughs> Wait, really? Mm -hmm. What about this? AT&T's deal is back. Wow. Pre-order a free Samsung Galaxy Z Flip 5 with the Galaxy Phone trade-in. In a year, in condition. NextGuard chews our vet recommended flea and tick protection. Your vet trusts them for her patients and her own dog because she knows that they're number one dog preferred. Use with caution in dogs with a history of seizures or neurologic disorders. Ask your vet about NextGuard chews. Meet the future. A chef, a designer, and ooh, an engineer. All learning to save and spend their money with Chase. The chef's cooking up first with her new debit card. Hungry? Uh-huh. The designer's eyeing sequins, uh, no, plaid. 
while mom is eyeing his spending. Nice. And the engineer? She's taking control with her own account for college. Three futures, all with Chase. Freedom for kids, control for parents, one bank for both. Chase, make more of what's yours. We are just a few minutes away from meeting the field for this year's Hamiltonian final, edition number 98, chasing $1 million. Here's a look at the field and how they're going to line up on the gate here in the 98th edition. And uh, both elimination winners in the inside five positions here. Post one, Celebrity Bambino, point of perfect, the other Burke trainee, post five. Yeah, they'll draw a little away from each other. Uh, Celebrity Bambino drawing the rail. Yannick Jingra opting to stick with Celebrity Bambino. Southwind Cores, Ghostly Casper, couple of the Canadian champions, and Team Orange Crush. Andy and Julie Miller in post eight. Looking for another Hamiltonian victory here for trainer Andy, uh, driver Andy Miller here from post position number eight. Oh, well was one of the highly regarded Philly, or, uh, Colts, I should say, coming into the season and had a, a little bit of a win streak going until last week, second in the eliminations. Tim Tietrich, though, trying to make some rare history today and become one of the only drivers to win the Hambo and the Hambo Oaks in the same day. He's standing by now with Mike Carter. Hey guys, I'm here with the driver of Oh Well, Tim Tietrich. And first, let's go back to the Hamiltonian Oaks in heaven. Hanover, a monster closing effort there. Yeah, that was cool. Um, we got way far back and they had big fractions and we were uh, lucky to win, but my mare race super to get it done. Let's talk a little bit about Oh Well. Draws post number two here. Marcus Melander said earlier this week, you know, if he's as good as he was in the Stanley Dancer, he should be good today. Yeah, he's raced good all year. He's been uh, kind of second-itis. He did win the one, but uh, he's a good horse. Um, wouldn't surprise me if he just goes out there and gets the job done like he's supposed to. Now he is last year's Mohawk Million winner, and it's not very often a horse gets to participate in one, let alone $2 million races. He's clearly a special horse. Oh, he's a good horse. You know, he's uh, hardly ever missed the board. He's always right there, and uh, he's a good horse. You know, we just need a little luck and a little some racing luck, and I think we'll get the job done. Good luck, Timmy. Thanks, guys. Greg, Emily, back to you. Thank you very much, Mike and uh, Tim Tietrich. Uh, you know, when he, you get on a roll like this, who knows what could happen here with OL. Definitely a shot. A great international flavor to the race this year, like there always seems to be with drivers from down under and uh, connections from all over the world. A strong contingent this year from north of the border as well. Yeah, and uh, trainer Greg McNair sending out his first Hambo starter along with the trainer Matt Bax as well. Uh, of course, uh, love to see uh, them come down and, and try their luck in, of course, uh, this signature event. All right, let's take a look at the eliminations now from a week ago where it was the Ron Burke show winning both splits in the first contest. It was his point of perfect getting it done. Had post six here and an aggressive approach from driver Yannick Gingra on this occasion. Put the horse right on the lead and took no prisoners. Yeah, and I'll be honest, wasn't sure what to make of him on the front. The horse has been a little cantankerous, but he responded when they asked. Of course, that was a good horse sitting on his back uh, in oh well, and he did what he was supposed to do and finish the job. Yeah, really gritty effort, I thought. Dug in uh, deep to get it done in that first elimination. Uh, really no anxious moments, though, in the second second split as stablemate Celebrity Bambino employed similar tactics once again with Yannick Shingra in the bike. Like you said, Greg, it wasn't as surprised, obviously, uh, but he did have pressure uh, there from the outside and winner's bet. Uh, so it wasn't necessarily a walk in the park, but when they turned for home, the horse uh, looked like he had plenty left to go. Yeah, he won, uh, I think, pretty much in hand here. Uh, driver Yannick Shingra was interviewed after that second elimination, asked uh, about his thoughts on who he would choose for the final. He wasted absolutely no time in picking Celebrity Bambino. Yeah, I thought he might have a little hesitation or at least need to talk to the connections, but like you said, wasted no time. He knew who his mount was today. Over to Mike Carter with a special guest. Well, James McDonald going to talk to us about Southwind Course as we walk out for the post parade here for the 98th Hamiltonian. It's your first drive. You're going to try to do what Todd McCarthy did last year and win it in your first try. Yeah, that would, that's always the goal. That would be amazing. Uh, it's a it's special race and just an honor to be in it. Now, you took the World Driving Championship back in 2017. Obviously, a big moment in your career. What would it mean to you to win the Hamiltonian here? Uh, you, you always chase races like this. This is the ultimate goal in harness racing is to win uh, major stake races, and I don't think they get any bigger than the Hamiltonian. So uh, 
like I said, it's an honor to be in it, but uh, to win it would be very special. Now, Southwind Corps only had one win. It was against Condition Company, but I'll tell you what, he's really matured into a really nice racehorse this year. Yeah, I mean, he upset in the good times. He come first up and beat Gaines Hanover, the Breeders' Crown champion. So, uh, you know, I got all the confidence in the world in the horse, and uh, I think if, if I can just finagle a trip somewhere out, I think uh, he's going to be heard from tonight. James, good luck. Thank you very much. Guys, back to you. Canadian driving champion James McDonald in his Hamiltonian debut. Yannick Gingra, he's been here before. We just had a look at him. He'll be on board. One of the elimination winners, Celebrity Bambino for trainer Ron Burke. Here's a look at Oh Well for driver Tim Tietrich and trainer Marcus Melander looking to go back to back here with a Hamiltonian Oaks, Hamiltonian victory. Son of uh, Muscle Hill looking for his sixth lifetime victory. And another from that strong Canadian contingent this year, Osceola. He's a fast but sometimes erratic colt. If he minds his manners, definitely contender possibility today. Doug McNair looking for his first Hamiltonian victory, teaming up with his dad, Greg, who does the training. They both hail from Guelph, Ontario, and Osceola, one of the horses carrying the hopes of Canada here this afternoon in the Hamiltonian. The four is winner's bet, Tr driver Dexter Dunn for trainer Domino Cicicieri. A three-year-old colt by Walner looking for his sixth lifetime victory. This colt finished fourth in his elimination and looking for his sixth lifetime victory. There's your number five entry point of perfect. He was the other elimination winner, Dave Miller and uh, trainer Ron Burke team up again trying to atone for the heartbreak they suffered back in 2017. This horse, one of the hot horses coming in, he's won two in a row. There's a look at the six, that's up your Deo for trainer driver Okus Vonstead. This uh, three-year-old Colt by Walner finished fifth in his elimination. He's looking for his fourth victory. Of course, Vonstead won the 2021 Hamiltonian with Captain Corey, and then again in 2017 with Perfect Spirit. He's won the prestigious Elite Lop twice, looking for another Hamiltonian victory. We heard from driver James McDonald just moments ago. Uh, he is the Canadian driving champion, and he'll be on board the champion trotting Colt from last season, Southwind Coors, the son of Walner, Matt Bax does the training making his Hamiltonian debut his father John finished third in this event back in 2001 with Duke of York Southwind course fifth in the elimination just squeaked into the final his connections expect some improvement here this afternoon the eight is French wine for team orange crush that's driver Andy Miller trainer Julie Miller Julie Miller has had five Hamiltonian finalists, five of the past seven years. In 2018, Mets Hall finished second to Atlanta. This son of Walner bar hopping, Andy Miller drove his damn creamy Mimi to victory as well. Team Orange Crush looking for their first Hamiltonian victory. And they've had so many close calls over the years. Could this be the year that they finally break through? Another one of the great storylines this year in the Hamiltonian. Next is Ghostly Casper, another of the Canadian invaders. Uh, ben Bayerjean, native of Quebec, uh, does the training. He picks up the White Knight, Brian Sears, who has a great past record, of course, in the Hamiltonian. He was a charging fourth in his elimination, trotted the fastest individual final quarter in the entire field, and would love to break through in a big way here. He would be a long shot if he did so. The 10 is tactical approach for trainer Nancy Tactor and driver Scott Zoran, a three-year-old colt by tactical landing. Sixth, looking for a sixth lifetime victory. Trainer Nanny, Nancy Tactor finished second in two of the past three editions of the Hamiltonian. She, of course, captured the 2020 Oaks with Sorella. And there's tactical approach. We had a post-10 winner earlier today in the Oaks. Can it happen here in the Hamiltonian final? Perhaps the right man in the driver's seat, Scott Zeron, a two-time Hamiltonian winner back in 2016 and again in 2018 with Atlanta. We talked about Team Orange Crush. Julie Miller, the trainer, husband Andy Miller, they have a, been a formidable 
uh, combination in the sport of harness racing over the years. They've had so many close calls in this particular event. Uh, look at the career accomplishments from Julie. 2,200 wins on the training side and more than 50 million in purse winnings. Andy, perennially one of the top drivers in all of harness racing. And again, they've been second. They've been third multiple times in the Hamiltonian. But you know they would dearly love to win it. We're going to head back over now and join Mike Carter. Hey guys, we're here with trader Julie Miller. And Julie, you and Andy always seem to have a horse rocking and ready to go for the Hamiltonian. You've hit the board many times. What would it mean to win this afternoon? Oh, obviously, that would be a dream come true for Andy and I and the team as well. You know, um, this is a rain, uh, race that's in our in our vision board and on our, our checklist. So I like to get it done today. Now, he won the Kentucky Championship Series at two, and he was really good in his elimination against Celebrity Bambino. Talk to us a little bit about him there. Yeah, you know what he proved that day, Mike, is that he's versatile. You know, Andy left with him and, like, tracked him really well. We knew we had second in the bag. You know, you want to kind of have something left in the tank for next week. So, you know, uh, hopefully uh, the race sets up for him and, and we do well. Now, you were quoted earlier this week as saying, you know, you got to try to find good spots to build their confidence. How important is building that confidence in these young horses? Oh, it's key. It's absolutely key because every step Start that we put him in, he just seemed to race better and brighter. And it, as you well know, if you have confidence, you're going to strive for more. All right, Julie, good luck. Thank you again, Mike. Guys, back to you. Thank you very much, Mike. And uh, best of luck, of course, to Julie Miller, always gracious with her time on this day. And I think they've got a contender in here, Emily, uh, a horse that uh, was a good second in the elimination and appears to be approving and peaking at the right time. Looks great on the track. Yeah, he's one of those horses that really commands some attention when you see him out on the track. He's a big, beautiful sign of bar hopping, as we said. And Julie Miller mentioning that, you know, he's really made a nice step up from two to three. And just like you said, I think this Colt is coming into his own. He's peaking in the right time and hopefully the right place. So quite an atmosphere here today, uh, Emily. This is the largest crowd that I have seen on Hamiltonian Day in a number of years, and that is fantastic to see. Uh, there was a real buzz around uh, harness racing, and of course this is the, the big one, the granddaddy, the one that uh, everybody wants to win. We're getting a look at the horses now uh, up close and personal out on the racetrack, and boy, they all make a great pre-race appearance. They all look nice and relaxed, and, and that's huge. Uh, uh, you need that professional demeanor for these horses to do their best. Yeah, you know, it goes hand in hand. You talk about a crowd on hand. Of course, we've got food trucks. We've got things lined up against the track that can sometimes get these horses a little keyed up. So uh, when you talk about being on the biggest stage, on the biggest day, that's what you want to see. You want to see these horses calm, cool, and collected. Of course, once they turn to the gate, things obviously change, and it's a game face and mode on. Uh, but right now, you want to see them calm, cool, and collected as we talk about it. It gets no bigger than Hamiltonian Day in harness racing and the drivers themselves you can tell uh, they're relaxed they're poised uh, many of them have been here before it's an absolute pressure cooker but you wouldn't know it and that's why they are the best at what they do this guy Yannick Gingra how desperately would he want to win a Hamiltonian he's won everything else there is to win this is the one that's eluded him yeah Hall of Famer like you said it finished second in this race three times I think that's maybe what makes it more bittersweet is that he's been so close but yet to get the job done He's got six Hamiltonian Oaks, six of those, count six. He's won multiple Big M driving, Big Meadowlands driving titles, and soon to be here in 2023. The wings of the starting gate are open, and the gate is moving for the 98th edition of the Hamiltonian. Again, we go upstairs to the Hall of Fame voice of the Meadowlands, Ken Warkington, with your call. Second choice of the four winners bet with Dexter Dunn, drawing a better post this time off that big effort in his elimination from post 10. So two to one, one celebrity Bambino. The field picks up speed for the $1 million, 98th Hamiltonian, here they come. And they're off and trotting in the Hamiltonian. Point of perfect, shoots out with early speed and zips right to the top here. Celebrity Bambino from the inside getting away well with up your Dale put in play second. So Celebrity Bambino third early. Oh well gets away in fourth position. Winner's bet is parked on the outside fifth. Osceola sixth on the inside. Then it's South Wind Coors followed by Ghostly Casper on the outside. Then French Wine and Tactical Approach at the opening quarter. Point of perfect. And on the outside brushing up Celebrity Bambino. Stablemate one 
at the opening quarter in 27 and 4. So it is the one. Celebrity Bambino at 5 to 2, setting up shop with Yannick Jingra, leading it by a length and a half. Point of perfect second. Burke is 1 2 at this point. Up your Deo, third on the inside. Oh, well, looking poised to make a move to the outside, and there he goes. Winner's bed will pick up his cover second over fifth past the half. Then it's tactical approach saving ground. Osceola is into a third overflow to the outside, then South Wind Coors and French Wine and Ghostly Casper. The half was 56 seconds. So Celebrity Bambino taking on some heavy pressure from Oh Well on the outside up to say hello. Those two stride for stride. And Winner's Bet sets it up from second over. He's third on the outside as they head by three quarters. And looking for racing room now is Point of Perfect locked in the box. As up your day was third over and fanning to the outside. Osceola went off Strahd and they turn home in the Hamiltonian 123 and 1 27 and 1 uh, third quarter speed and it's oh well oh well's under heavy urging though oh well up your day oh, towers up late on the outside oh well and on the inside shooting through late tactical approach is coming on tactical approach from post 10 the money man with the huge upset in the Hamiltonian tactical approach rode the rail to win it over oh well up your Dale and Celebrity Bambino in 150 and 3. Absolutely unbelievable and ecstatic Nancy Tactor winning her first Hamiltonian and very similar to what we saw earlier today. 10 comes out of <laughs> nowhere only instead of on the far outside scoots up the pylons to win in dramatic fashion i was gonna say i'm having a little bit of deja vu didn't we just talk to scott Ciron? he said not scared of post 10. look at him there he's got to be so happy with that trip and scott Ziron, we talked about it earlier he's called the money man and there's a reason for that here he is with his uh, emphatic fist pump the third time he's been able to do that in this race in the second time today as we said a post position number 10 of course trainer nancy tactor as we said checking off her first hamiltonian victory all right let's take a quick commercial break we'll be back with the winning connections in a moment some of the top horses in the sport are born and raised in Pennsylvania. It's really the world capital of standard bread breeding. Breeders from other states locate in Pennsylvania. It's not a hard sell. I mean, we have a whole mess of clients that send us horses to take advantage of the program. The racing opportunities have been, continue to be, and into the future are very strong here. This is where the top stallions are. A lot of the top mares are here in Pennsylvania. It's perfect. You like that bone? I got a great price on it. Did you see my tail when that chewy box showed up? Oh, I saw it. Sorry about the vase. Can we just say vase like normal people? <sighs> Fine. I always wonder what it would be like to have a tail. Maybe you did one time. Maybe a thousand years from now, I'll be tailless using that chewy app to get you great prices on treats. I'm pretty sure it takes more than a thousand years. Vaz. Pets aren't just pets. They're more. Vaz. Save more on what they love with everyday great prices at Chewy. Guys, got hair loss? I know what you're thinking. Should I shave my head? Comb it over? Wear a hat? Just stop. This isn't 1970. Keep your hair and your confidence because Bosley, America's number one hair restoration experts, can give you your real hair back permanently. Check them out because they're giving away an absolutely free information kit and a free gift card to everyone who scans this QR code. Dude, you don't have to look like your dad because this isn't your dad's hair loss treatment. People all over the country trust Bosley because they're ahead of the curve. They use the latest technology to give you your real hair back. And the best part, Bosley's permanent solution is protected by the Bosley Guarantee. Let them show you for free how awesome your hair could look with an absolutely free information kit and a gift card for $250 off. Scan the QR code. Don't wait. Scan the code now and ask about the Bosley Guarantee. This is the sought-after trophy when we tee it up, the first event of the season that you think about. This is a way to end the year in a way that only one man can. The world's best golfers battle for the tour's toughest trophy to win, the FedEx Cup. The playoffs begin next weekend on CBS and streaming on Paramount+. Plus.
The 2023 Hamiltonian is brought to you by New Jersey Tourism. Nancy, you win your first one. How's it feel? Oh my god, I don't have words. That doesn't happen often. <laughs> there you go. All right, a very uh, happy Nancy Tactor, and obviously so. What a moment for her, following in the footsteps of her father, Jimmy, often kind of racing in the shadow of him. Of course, this race was formerly known as the Tactertonian. <laughs> uh, he seemed to win it every second year. But great to see her, a fantastic trainer in her own right win it today and to do it in such fashion exactly greg you know she made her hamiltonian debut in 2014 and it finished second in two of the past three editions of this race so to finally check that one off of her list has to be rewarding now we'll get ready to send it back to the winner's circle michael carter has the winning driver scott zeron the winning driver scott zeron scott you win your third hamiltonian this afternoon tell us how it feels it, it is ecstatic because it's a bit of a surprise to me. I knew I had a great competitive horse. Uh, I just hadn't had him in the right spots all year. I over-raced him, and he got a little weak late. And today we really had our, our hand forced by having the 10 hole. So I knew I was going to give him an easy race. Uh, and then just the fact that the, I was as close as I was at three quarter pole, I was confident he'd give me a great run. Now, he did really well in his elimination, but boy, he really motored from off the pace here. What an impressive effort. He did, because it was so effortless, majority of the mile going, staying left on the inside, and, and uh, he, he felt so brave and confident going past all the horses incrementally throughout that race that when we found room down the lane, it was, uh, it was extremely exciting for me. Scott, congratulations. Go celebrate. Thank you. Guys, back to you. We will try and get a look at the uh, prices now as Tactical Approach wins as a long shot returning $26.80. Oh, well, great effort from him to be second today. And uh, Aki Swanstead's Up Your Dale rebounds with a nice third place finish. Yeah, you know, I we were coming down the lane. We were sitting here talking off camera and we were calling horses from everywhere. It looked like a wide open affair. Uh, as you said, all of those horses racing extremely well. Oh, well, uh, you know, did all the heavy lifting as far as first over is concerned. So he, t he took the most air, and I thought he held on gamely to finish second. As you said, up your day, came charging late, just didn't have that final punch. All right, so major purse money today, and major money for those players who played along in that pick four with a, a couple of post-10 winners in that four-race sequence. So we're going to throw it over now to Mike Carter, who's got the winning connection. Winning trainer Nancy Tactor. Nancy, I got a chance to catch up with you a minute in the paddock. You were speechless then. Has it really kind of hit you yet? Um, I don't know if it's going to hit me until maybe Monday morning, but um, definitely a super thrill. You know, my day kind of started off a little crappy. Um, nothing was working. I had a scratch one cold sick, and my one of my second trainers, she reminded me, she's like, it has to rain before you have a rainbow. So I get tactical got us our rainbow. So I'm super proud of my entire team. Everybody's worked really hard with this Cole, and he's just blossomed into the nicest individual ever. And like you saw in the winter circle, he just stands so good. He's all class. Take us through the mile, uh, Scotty. Said, you know, he was really able to kind of get him comfortable and he just rolled from off the pace and was just easy going. Yeah, he's super, super nice to drive. That's probably his bi biggest asset that he has. You know, Scott can do anything with him. You can leave with him, you can take him back, you can pull him when you need to. So um, I was a little worried when he got away so far back and they were going so slow to the half, but then I saw that the rail just kept opening up for him. I don't know. You know, Scott was having a Moses moment out there. What was going on? But, you know, he was just really strong, and then he had just enough to finish the mile out. So, I'm, like I said, I'm really proud of everybody. Nancy, congratulations. Go celebrate. Thank you. All right, Tactical Approach takes the 98th Hamiltonian. We're celebrating with the happy connections. Of course, we've got uh, John Campbell, the uh, president and CEO of the Hamiltonian Society. Jason Settlemore, of course, our COO here at the Meadowlands, general manager. Jeff Grell, our chairman and uh, CEO here as well. And Kelsey Grambert's back with us. He's going to present the trophy here to the winning ownership group. Robert LeBlanc, John Fielding, Joe Sprocco, and John Federer's JAF Racing. Kelsey, another great Hamiltonian. An extraordinary race. I really had fun. I was watching with some inside information. Um, my heart goes out to a number of the people that were competing. But this horse, Tactical, what's the name? Tactical Approach. Tactical Approach. Just 
kicked ass. I am yeah. very, very <laughs> impressed. And uh, these guys have won this thing before, so they obviously know what they're doing. Uh, it's my honor to present this to you guys. Congratulations. Uh, that is one way to put it. All right, look back at some of the celebrations from earlier today. And of course, tactical approach with a perfect tactical drive wins the 98th edition of the Hamiltonian. Thank you so much for watching today on CBS Sports and so long from the Meadowlands Racetrack.